Let's talk a little bit about money in relation to magic today. After all, I think we'd probably be deluding ourselves if we imagined that it wasn't a majority of practitioners who came to magic initially to fix a perceived or real lack in their lives in the fields of love, safety, and probably most commonly money. Whether they end up staying for these reasons or not usually depends on how quickly those basic needs are met. However, I think that money magic is central enough to the gateways that lead to more significant, personally transformational magic to be worth making it the topic of a full video. So here's my take, and if you stick around until the end of the video, I'll give you a couple solid recommendations for your own practice. First of all, let's get the big question out of the way. Is it possible to make a comfortable living out of creating occult or magic-related material? I guess that may depend on what you call a comfortable living. However, it's worth noting that one of the most prolific, successful, and well-recognized occult writers of the past half century, being one of my greatest heroes and role models, and in fact a man who has striven tirelessly to make the occult accessible, namely the fantastic Lon Milo Duquette, famously said something that might give wannabe occult careerists at least some pause. Writing occult books isn't a get-rich-quick scheme. It isn't even a get-rich-slow scheme. One of the first things you learn when you get into magical topics is how uninterested the rest of the world is. And this is always quite a baffling realization considering how incredible and world-shatteringly significant the fact that magic actually works is. Unfortunately, the thought shortcut that if it's too good to be true, it probably is, stifles most people's interest in investigating any further. And understandably so. It is a surprising proposition after all. I can't imagine it'll take very long for the comments section of this very video to start gathering complaints that I'm not offering any evidence that magic works, despite putting out four years worth of my best efforts here on YouTube to help people find out for themselves, which of course is the only way minds are changed, as I expect anyone subscribed to my channel probably knows. So if someone as successful and accessible as Lon Milo Duquette often struggles to make ends meet, we might conclude that writing about the occult is not a sustainable source of income. Certainly not for most people. What about publishing? Over the last few years, as I've developed this channel, I've got to know a good number of publishers, all dedicated to producing high-quality content with a high-quality form. The common thread between them is that they work tirelessly, and generally generate enough money to pay for the next book release, and quite a meagre, modest personal life. These people tend to do what they do because they see a higher purpose in it, and they take great pride in creating something both beautiful and important. Naturally, there are large corporate publishing houses as well, but I might argue that those are rather specialists at marketing, rather than occultists with a concern for accuracy and quality. And I'm certainly not setting out here to suggest that marketing isn't a lucrative business. Some of the authors who are published through these large corporations certainly do have a concern for accuracy and quality. But now we're back to my first point about writing occult books not being a lucrative business. Next up, of course, we have the business of courses, classes, and events. Again, you need to be quite well established in the industry already to be able to ask for the kind of money that would make any kind of dent in your monthly bills. This isn't the world of project management or personnel effectiveness or the latest web app frameworks where speakers can expect four to six digits for a 60-minute appearance. Magic is a fringe interest where investments come from private individuals, not from major corporations looking to allocate their yearly budget. But what about you, foolish fish, I hear you say? Didn't you say you quit your job at the end of December? You're clearly making a living from the occult. I did indeed quit my job four months ago, and in those four months I have now burnt through almost all of my savings. The eagle-eyed amongst you may have spotted that the book reviews that I've been doing over the past four months have been on books that I bought over the Christmas period when I was still employed, or books that were very generously given to me by publishing companies. Am I saying all this so that you'll take pity on me and send me loads of money? 
Of course I am. Membership started just $2 a month and we now have super thanks activated on the channel. So if you want to just show your appreciation once by buying me a coffee, you can absolutely go ahead and check that out. My family and I will all be extremely grateful. <laughs> But seriously, and maybe most significantly for you, dear viewer, I guess that what I'm trying to say is manage your expectations. Just because you can find people selling their homemade grimoires for $2,000 on Etsy or eBay or even on their own websites doesn't mean anyone's buying them. And even if they managed to sell one, let's say for the sake of argument, for some unknown reason, someone with huge amounts of money decides they want to spend that much on someone's school project. Because let's be honest, that's what most of them look like. $2,000 is a nice sum to receive all at once without a doubt. But how sustainable is this? How comfortably do you think you can live on $2,000 and for how long? Because trust me, that freak occurrence of someone being stupid enough to pay that kind of money for a movie prop isn't going to come every month. As an aside, some books really are worth that much, but only because you're buying a 400-year-old antique or a book made out of the finest materials in existence by expert bookbinders at the peak of their skills and designed by teams of fine artists. It's the object you're paying for in those cases, not the so-called hidden knowledge. So we can say that it's not impossible to supplement a main source of income by creating high-quality, esoteric or occult, content, services or products, like books and spell kits and so on. But only a very few manage to make a living out of it as their only regular source of income. And getting rich that way is only marginally easier than selling lemonade by the side of the road. Technically not impossible, but unlikely to say the least. I will admit that products where magic is a flavour of the product can sell well, and even sometimes very well, like art featuring alchemical symbolism if the art is done well, and novels about children attending a magic school, for example, sure. But if there isn't a professionally developed skill supporting the art or the writing, or at least a famous name to go with it, the fact that magic is the flavour won't help it sell better. So really, initially, it's the art itself, the story, the famous name that people are buying, not the topic of magic. So in short, magic itself isn't a particularly marketable product. And I don't know why, but it just isn't. And I think this is something many people find out the hard way, so it's definitely worth mentioning. However, and here we get to the interesting bit, Using your occult knowledge to become the kind of person who makes a lot of money? That's definitely possible. The only catch is that you need to be okay with what that actually means. People who have what you might consider to be a lot of money are either born with money, that's not something you're likely to change easily, or they have made money the only focus of their lives at the expense of love, family, rest, entertainment or anything that might distract them from performing money-generating or money-grabbing actions every waking hour of the day for their whole lives. Now, while you might be able to finance certain philanthropic projects once you have a lot of money, you don't get to become rich. I mean, very rich in terms of financial wealth, of course by being a philanthropist, or by being anything other than a focused moneymaker for that matter. Personally, I decided quite early that I didn't want to get to my deathbed and look back on my life and see nothing more than a series of business deals with no other effect on the world than having exploited the weak and added a few zeros to a bank account. Of course, that was my own decision and I'm not here to judge anyone. The good news is that if you're okay with not owning a collection of Lamborghinis and a swimming pool villa in Beverly Hills, magic can help you lift yourself out of debt and live a comfortable life while still having interests outside of your profit and loss balance sheet. Don't get me wrong, magic can help you become a ruthless business shark too if that's really what you want to dedicate your life to. Let me nevertheless address myself to what I hope is the majority of you listening. 
Those of you hoping to make ends meet and still have a good chunk left over for fun and for expanding your horizons, whether you like to do that traveling, learning, creating, or however else. In other words, let me address those of you who want to free yourselves from the shackles of poverty and actually do something worthwhile with your life. Because it's undeniable that while an exclusive focus on money is unhealthy, it's also very hard not to focus exclusively on money when you don't have enough of it to be comfortable. So let's see what we have at our disposal to get out of a rut. Here now are three books by Damon Brand from the Gallery of Magic which I honestly think can help with this. These are incredibly cheap books, which I recommend reading in their Kindle form. The paperbacks are of quite low quality and they're in black and white, so you're definitely not missing out on any delightful book experience. These books really are about the contents, not the form. I will say, however, that while these books are very inexpensive, they aren't free. They're the result of the author's hard work and he's rightly protected that work by placing a protective curse on whoever would use piracy to acquire the books. It's a simple curse that only means that the magical processes described inside won't work for you, that's all. Considering the extremely low price of the books, I don't think that's unreasonable. First off, the magical cash book. This is a very simple, surprisingly effective rite involving the evocation of the genius spirit Nitika. I really like this one because Nitika is neither a demon nor an angel. She's a genius spirit, not to be confused for a djinn or a genie. And even absolute beginners tend to get great results with her. Damon Brand describes the complete process in simple terms and it's designed to bring a precise designated quantity of money into your life. Naturally, this works with the existing channels available to you at any given time, so if you're already well connected, the amount of money you can request might just be higher than if you're not. But this can be a good way to acquire specific quantities of money for specific purchases, like a certain book, a piece of homeware equipment you need, transport, and so on. I've had successes with this one that were surprising, to say the least. About five or six years ago, I needed 800 Polish Zlotys, which is about $200, to pay for a particular therapy for my son. That's not an insignificant amount. I performed the ritual, and on the third day, I got an email from my bank in England asking me to update some details. I rarely used my English bank account since we moved to Poland. I've actually closed it now, but... At the time, in order to log on, I had to enter a randomly generated number from a little electronic device called a token. And I kept that token in the zipped side pocket of my travel cosmetics case. Imagine my surprise when I opened that zipped pocket to get the token and found eight neatly folded 100 zloty bills in there. I'll be honest, and uh, you can probably imagine, that's when I started becoming more interested in the Gallery of Magic's work. The Kindle edition is actually on special offer right now, and you can click on the Amazon Associate link in the description, which costs you nothing. But I get a small commission for anything you buy if you reached Amazon through those links. Okay, the second book from the Gallery of Magic that I'll recommend today is The Magical Job Seeker. Attract the work you love with angelic power. While the Magical Cash book was already shockingly cheap at $4.99, this one is even cheaper at $2.99 for the Kindle edition. The point of this one is to help you combine meaning in your life and a decent income. This one uses angelic powers, which may put some off and may on the contrary be exactly what you're looking for. The point here is to give you that little bit of extra luck switching careers or climbing the ladder if you're already in a career you love. Getting your CV noticed by the right people, inspiring you to put the right keywords in your CV, ensuring you and your interviewers are all in exactly the right mood, and so on. All those little providential nudges to make fate tip its hand in your direction as you search for work that'll elevate you and not gradually shackle you and suck the joy out of your life. Finally, there's Wealth Magic, The Secrets of Extreme Prosperity, for those of you who prefer an infernal approach. Though you should be aware that this one uses a combination of angels and demons. It's very effective, and the safety is built in so that beginners can have a go without getting their fingers burnt. Actually, that's one of the features of the Gallery of Magic that I like so much. After performing just the third ritual of this book, I suddenly came into enough money to buy a nice sized flat. 
the one I'm currently living in. And after completing the whole process, which took me a little over a year with breaks, I was promoted to a management position in a large IT company. That's how I managed to buy all those books you see on my shelves, or the majority of them anyway. And that's the job that I chose to give up last December to focus on my family and to spend time working out what the next big project will be. It's definitely a privilege to have that option. There you go. Three solid recommendations for money magic. Naturally, there's candle magic and all sorts of spells you can buy on Etsy. But for my money, excuse the pun, these three books are solid investments if you're down to your last $10. I hope this helps some of you at least, and if it did help you, maybe you might consider leaving a thumbs up or even subscribe if you haven't done so already, as that always really helps the channel. As I mentioned earlier, if any of you are feeling like being generous and wish to support the channel with a single donation, super thanks have just been enabled on my channel. You can find the little heart with a dollar symbol inside just below the video there for making single donations. I'd definitely be very grateful during this transitional period. It would help to get more books to review for sure, and even hopefully pay for a holiday for my family this summer. A man can certainly dream. Let me take a final moment of your time to point you to the Foolish Fish Discord server with over 300 channels and topics which is available to Foolish Fish members. Memberships start at just $2 a month and you can find out more about them by clicking on the join button next to the subscribe button or if you're on an iOS device by visiting any of my videos via the Chrome browser. A huge thank you to all existing members, you really are the pillars that hold this channel up. There's no question that I wouldn't be able to continue doing this without your incredibly generous support. Wishing you all success and prosperity in your endeavours. Thank you for watching and see you soon with another video.